The Hyundai Kickoff Show is presented by the all-new Hyundai Elantra, proud sponsor of the NFL. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the captains for the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos. And coin toss participants, honorary captains, your Bay Area Super Bowl MVPs. From the Raiders, Fred Bolitnikoff, Jim Plunkett, and Marcus Allen. From the 49ers, Steve Young, Jerry Rice, and Joe Montana. And now, referee Cleet Blakeman. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and welcome to Super Bowl 50. Congratulations to you, Carolina. Congratulations to you, Denver. Assisting me today will be none other than Super Bowl MVP, Joe Montana. Glad to have you here. Today's coin, is on the gold side is heads, the silver side is tails. The gold side is heads, the silver side is tails. Carolina, you're the visiting team. It is your call. Tails. Tails is the call. Tails is the call. Joe, do us a favor. Tails is the call. It is tails. Carolina wins the toss. Defer. Which way you want to kick? Kick that one. Okay, put your backs there. Come on, guys. Carolina wins the toss. Elected to defer to the second half. Denver will receive. Good luck, gentlemen. So Peyton and the Broncos will have the football first. And Super Bowl 50 kicks off when we return here on CBS. Thank you for watching the Hyundai Kickoff Show presented by the 2016 Hyundai Genesis, the official luxury vehicle of the NFL. What separates the stars from the superstars are the guys who continuously and successfully win. Carolina's been very exceptional. Cam Newton's been unbelievable. Cam is, is such a dynamic player. That's our quarterback, our guy that's leading the charge. Peyton, he's going to do every trick that he's ever thought about. Peyton's had a lot of success. Probably his last year off. It's very special what they've done and what they've accomplished, and that's what makes them the great ones. Welcome back to Levi Stadium in Super Bowl 50. Jim Nance, Bill Sims. CBS, we were there for the first and honored to be here for the 50th. Getting a good start for Denver because Carolina has been so explosive in these playoffs early. Well, How I'll, is it? I'll just say this. For the Denver Broncos, Gary Kubiak calling plays for that offense likes to get off the quick starts too. So don't overplay on the defensive side if you're the Carolina Panthers. Well, the weather, it's beautiful. It's 76, but there are breezes. You can paint the sky a brilliant blue here for this milestone 50th. This game is brought to you in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. Graham Gano will be kicking to Andre Caldwell in a game that began back on January 15th, 1967, the old NFL AFL championship. Now the 50th Super Bowl commences. We will have a return. Stepping up for it is Caldwell. And he's out to about the 20, where the Panthers take him down after an 18-yard return. Peyton Manning taking the field now, the oldest starting quarterback in Super Bowl history. And if he wins today, it would be win number 200, the first to ever reach that number. That's regular and postseason combined. He sits at 199, tied with Brett Favre for the most in history. C.J. Anderson gets to start at running back. We'll move Daniels over to the right side. And here come the Panthers chasing after Manning, who gets it away in time. And Daniels is tight end, has an 18-yard gain. They were ready for it. The blitz up the middle picked up very well. Good block by C.J. Anderson. Man-to-man -man coverage down the field. You said it, Daniels against Roman Harper. And right away, you see that Owen Daniels had a good year, fast enough to run away from these safeties. And had the big game in the AFC title game with two touchdown catches. They've got Vernon Davis in as an extra tight end. And they move Anderson out wide to the right. And 
goes again, and Sanders has the short gain and the catch. And out of bounds after a pickup of six. Both teams coming out aggressive. How about this? It's a blitz this time from the corner. Coming from Peyton Manning's blind side, he reads it. Good adjustment by Emmanuel Sanders. What a start. Two blitzes by Carolina's defense. Two completions by Peyton Manning. Personnel grouping you see for the Broncos. Anderson remains the running back on a second and four. And the throw for the third straight play in this one in the direction of Owen Daniels. But Jim, we talked about it in the pregame, talked about it just before we came on. Listen, Gary Kubiak and all his days of calling plays, even down with the Houston Texans, and especially here with the Denver Broncos, even though their offense hasn't been explosive, likes to show you all of his new plays and new formations in that opening drive. Caught Carolina by surprise those first two plays. They send three receivers to the right, including Caldwell, who enters the game. Third and four. Aiden dropping back even deeper, and now releases. He's got an open target and a first down on the Carolina side of the field. It's Caldwell with the catch and a gain of 22 with a flag. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 24. Up coming to Klein, large enough for a first down. Well, we saw, Jim, the two blitzes, and what it did, it scared the Carolina defense. Holding on the outside, but Josh Norman gets his hands on Caldwell, so they backed up, played really safe, and that's why Caldwell wide open to the outside. Great protection for Peyton Manning. Jordan Norwood comes into the Bronco lineup as a wide out. And a first down at the Carolina, 34. Their first rush of the game. Anderson up ahead for about seven, running behind Evan Mathis. Anderson had a slow start to the season, and he mentioned to us how frustrating it was early in the year not being able to rip off some early big runs. He said specifically seven or eight yarders to get into the rhythm, and he has one on his first touch here. Well, that's right, a really good block that time by Evan Mathis, the left guard, and C.J. Anderson pretty excited to get a chance to start, like you said, to get in rhythm. And he says, I wear defenses down as the game goes along. And he's from the local area across the bay in Vallejo. And he's got it again. He's got the first down with ease. And he barrels down to about the Carolina 14 into the arms of Shaq Thompson. That's a 12-yard carry. Evan Mathis and the center, Matt Paradis. Watch 69, gets the big kick out, comes back inside, gets Luke Keekley. And we, one of the things that we thought was going to be a weakness, maybe, when you look at this Denver offense, could they handle the size and the strength and really speed of this Carolina defense? What a start for Denver's offensive line. Anderson is replaced by Ronnie Hillman. And another first down. Now with the Carolina 14. It's Hillman. He slips. And he's in trouble. And he's not back. There to meet him is Shaq Thompson, the rookie from Washington. Well, a lot of speed at the linebacker position, really important for them to be able to run and make plays. But the guy that made the, the play was Charles Johnson, number 95 from the outside, freed it up. So Shaq Thompson, safety in college, linebacker in the pros, just like Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis, Jim, they all can run. And fast. Of course they can run, but they can run really fast. Demarius Thomas in a slot on the left side. Second down and 13. He has not been targeted on this opening drive. Manning looking to the right. Yes, knocked down. Getting there in time was Robert McLean. What a story. This kid McLean, he was picked up late in the season after injuries to the likes of Benet and Wickery and didn't even see action as a corner until week 17. He's had a strong postseason. He sure has, and what they were trying to do, they were trying to run a play they did against New England in the AFC Championship game, trying to get the touchdown. And McLean, quick, fast, can really jump. Got to be careful. And here's Manning again on third and 13. And just nothing there. Davis there to defend on Anderson, and that'll bring out Brandon McManus for a field goal attempt. Now both sides right now, both the defense, they're happy to get off the field after that horrible start. But a lot of confidence has to go to Denver's offense. 
getting protection for Peyton Manning, hitting those passes, and keep, keeping that uh, Carolina defense off balance. 34-yard field goal try coming up for McManus, who has been 7-for-7 seven seven in the postseason. And the kick is good. They pick up three first downs on this opening drive before it bogs down in the red zone. But they come away with an opening three. Peyton completed four out of six on that opening series for 47 yards. Leads to a McManus 34-yard field goal in Carolina. Trails for the first time in the postseason. Having outscored for Seattle and Arizona 55 to 7 in first half action in the two playoff games. Stepping up for it, here's Whitaker off the McManus kickoff. And Fozzie Whitaker runs into Shaq Barrett and company, including Latimer as well. Cam Newton ready to get things started for Carolina and take that field for the first time. The 26-year-old MVP have his first action in a moment. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. Please drink responsibly. The all-new Hyundai Elantra, proud sponsor of the NFL. Snickers, you're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Snapshots from the first ever Super Bowl, back then known again as the NFL AFL Championship. Newton, as is customary, says a little prayer, blew a little kiss to his mom, goes back to his senior year in high school when he fractured an ankle, and she said she was worried if he should ever play football again. He said, Mom, I'm going to say a little prayer at the start of every game for you. And that's Stewart getting the first handle for Carolina. A pickup of two. When you talk about quarterbacks, you want to get off to a good start in the Super Bowl, you see 50 total touchdowns so far this year. But the fact that Cam Newton they can design runs, I think helps take the pressure and nerves away from him. The second and eight coming up. Newton, the first Heisman winning quarterback to start a Super Bowl since Jim Plunkett and Roger Staubach, the only other Heisman quarterback to start a Super Bowl game. As he play action fakes and fires, and it's too high for Philly Brown. Albeit it's only a field goal deficit here in the opening minutes, but take a look at this pie chart. This postseason, the Panthers coming in had never trailed. We're only tied for eight minutes as they, again, got off to these blistering, explosive starts against the Seahawks and Cardinals. And in fact, had that at least double-digit lead for 104 out of a possible 120 minutes. Well, they could have got off to a good start right here. Cam Newton had Philly Brown to the outside, wide open. Chris Harris, the corner, slipped and fell. Third and eight. And from the gun, rushing three. Pass caught. But the immediate stick, let's see where they mark it. That's Tlaib with the coverage and the immediate takedown. It's going to be about a foot short of the first. Greg Olson with the catch. And they're bringing out Nortman, the punter. Well, Von Miller, a couple things on that play. Good protection. Von Miller was spying Cam Newton in case he broke the pocket. And Aqib Tlaib. How about that? On the number one passing threat as they look at it, Greg Olson. Well, he made the catch and tackle so important, and Tlaib did it all alone. He was able to prevent the big tight end from fighting for the first. I've seen it over the years, seen it this year. Keep Tlaib plays outside, match up against re big receivers, and when they need him, short of the first down, they will put him on tight ends like Gronkowski. You look at it right in the middle of the field. You see number 58? He's ready to break if Cam Newton gets out of the pocket. Cam Newton doesn't run. If he feels, you know, protection, doesn't crack under the pressure, not looking to run away, run out there too fast, he's looking to throw the football down the field. Brad Norton with a big leg, fourth year out of Wisconsin, to punt it to Emmanuel Sanders, who has not returned punts since he had a key muff in a return 
in the game against the Raiders, which the Broncos had lost at home. Signals for a catch. And has it at the 24. 48-yard boot. Bouncing back onto the field, the Denver offense. Tonight's next-gen stats are presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Benny Fowler is in the lineup as the Broncos start their second series. He's in a slot to the left. Had a big catch in the divisional round win against Pittsburgh. Over to Sanders. Blockers are there. And Keekley hammers him down, but they've got a pickup of seven. Well, they were ready for the blitz that time, too. That's why they had the screen. But watch this. What they're famous for, two blitzers up the middle. Peyton Manning saw it. Good pickup by the running back, Anderson. Then from the corner, Robert McBride gets in there. Peyton Manning sees it. So far, Denver's offense ready for the blitz and doing a good job. That's Virgil Green shifting to the right side. They go to Anderson. Immediate contact by Keekley. Tried to fight it off, but Thomas Davis was there as well. Give him a yard or two. It's almost time for the Pepsi Super Bowl 50 halftime show, a musical celebration of past, present, and future, featuring Coldplay with special guest artist Beyonce and Bruno Mars. Don't miss it. Well, shoot, I'm still trying to get over the national anthem. That's that was just awesome. Absolutely fabulous. Great start to the game. It's a third and one here for Denver. Manning from the gun, right over to Anderson, and the Panthers are there with a double whammy, both Robert McClain and Thomas Davis for no gain, and now the Broncos will be forced to punt. You see these type of plays all the time from the linebackers of the Carolina Panthers. Thomas Davis, 58, coming from the inside. You think, oh, I'm going to catch it, turn up, but the tackle, solid. That broken forearm, you can't even tell. We watched him in practice. Wasn't a factor. Not a factor so far here in this game. Colquitt with the dangerous Ted Ginn. Dropping back to the 16. He's going to try to work that right side. And he's got an early hit on him as Kayvon Webster has been making special teams tackles throughout the postseason. And he's got another gem on this occasion after a 50-yard punt. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by Disney's The Jungle Book in theaters everywhere April 15th. And by Audi, choosing the moon brings out the best in us. Been a fantastic week of hosting the Bay Area, San Francisco getting a lot of the headlines, but San Jose and Santa Clara, everybody pitching in. Experience the game from every angle with the CBS Sports app, the ultimate viewing companion. Get it now, cbssports.com slash mobile. So both drives for the Panthers have begun inside their own 20. And that's Cam's pass. It's bobbled and Kotchery, they say incomplete. The official on the near sideline came in, and he was the one who signaled incomplete. Country looking to the sideline, telling the coaches, I got it. And we got a challenge flag is out. Linebackers on the play action fake really flew up to try to stop the run or Cam Newton running with the football and there was a wide big hole there for Cam Newton to throw to Jericho Cotchery. Cotchery the 12 year veteran has played for the Jets and the Steelers and now the Panthers. Carolina is challenging the ruling in the field that we had an incomplete pass. Phillip Rivers old uh, favorite target back in their North Carolina State days together. If they win the challenge the catch by Cotchery would be a gain of 24.
ruling on the field, incomplete pass. Let's bring in Mike Carey, who was the referee at Super Bowl 42. What do you see here, Mike? I think this is a good challenge by Carolina. The receiver goes up, he's going to the ground, so he must maintain control of the ball, which he does. If I was in the booth, I would reverse this to a catch. The ball never hits the ground, even though there's a bobble inside, maintains good control, up off the ground, he rolls over, keeps it off the ground at the end. Even that last part of it there, he made sure it didn't slip out of his hands all the way through to the ground. After a review of the play, the ruling on the field stands as called, is an incomplete pass. Carolina will be charged with its first timeout. Trying to look for what they saw here. His hand was definitely under the football. Only thing that you could see is the ball touched right there as he was rolling over. Had a hand under it there. Now he rolls over. Does it touch? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It's a two wide open receivers missed by Carolina here in the opening start of the first quarter. So it's a second and ten. And they go straight ahead and twist it backwards. Jonathan Stewart runs into Derek Wolf. Spun him around. It looked awkward. We hear so much talk. Von Miller, Demarcus Ware, but a big key for this game today. Derek Wolf, Malik Jackson, both inside. They got to hang in there. And Jonathan Stewart lipping off the field. I'm not surprised the way that looked. And Stewart, such a valuable part of this offense. He came up just 11 yards shy of a 1,000-yard season and had about 18 carries a game. Mike Tolbert is in. He's on a wing to the right. And the Panthers have a third and 10. Here comes pressure, and they've gotten to him. The ball is out in the end zone, and it's recovered by Malik Jackson for the touchdown. It was Vaughn Miller with the strip sack and Jackson with the recovery. Nobody opened down the field fast enough, and Vaughn Miller beats Rimmers and the tight end to the right. Here it comes. Mike Rimmers just can't get there fast enough. And Cam Newton holding the football, looking to throw it down the field. A meeting here of the first and second picks of the 2011 draft. Newton first, Miller second. And Miller, as he did, such a gigantic force against New England as they hit Brady time and time again. He had two and a half sacks of the pick in that game. And this leads to the recovery of the touchdown by Jackson. Extra point is good. Malik Jackson's first career touchdown, regular season or post in his 70th career game. And now, on this occasion, not the Panthers, it's the Broncos off to the fast start. Vaughn Miller, again, a quarterback nightmare. He thought back in that draft in 2011, he might go first. He thought he could be Carolina's next Julius Peppers. Say this, coming into this game, the Carolina offense has faced some good defenses, but Denver's the best in the NFL and maybe the fastest. And instead, Miller went right behind Newton as Joe Webb is the returner. Corey Nelson, one of those to hit him. And pass the whistle. They carry it out, but a 25-yard return. Here's a look from our Bud Light Skycam. But what happened on that sack, Mike Grimmers, the right tackle, tried to be too aggressive, I think, Jim, and when he was trying to block Von Miller, leaned a little forward, and once he did that, out of position, and Von Miller, as usual, great jump off the football. Panthers this season trailed on three occasions by 10-plus, and they came back and won all of them. Their only loss was at Atlanta in December, 17-1. Here they run a little option, and they toss it to Whitaker. And 
that's T.J. Ward who pushes him out. They still have Jonathan Stewart on the sideline injured on that last series. When you see two guys inside are in the backfield for the Carolina Panthers, you got to expect some type of read by Cam Newton or the option. Shaq Barrett goes inside or takes the quarterback. Nobody there for the pitch man. They'll stay with both Tolbert and Whitaker, and that was Carolina's first first down. It's Tolbert. Fumble, and the ball is out. In the bottom of the pile, there is a Bronco who appeared to be waiting for it. But the officials rule it stays with Carolina. It definitely came out, no question, on the hit. Mike Tolbert recovered it. Ends up being a two-yard pickup. Danny Trevathan rips it out. So able to recover his own. Makes it a second and eight. Over the head. In the area of Ted Ginn Jr. Well, Jim, they're going to try to keep Cam Newton from running the football. Look how tight they are here. Watch Ted Ginn go down the scene. He's got him, but when Cam Newton misses, a little switch route from the outside, he misses high. That's twice. He's had a chance to hit a receiver down the field and threw it over the top. He's hit one of his first four throws. Two of the incompletions have been in on the high side. Third down and eight. Here comes DeMarcus Ware after him. And the Broncos get to him again. Darian Stewart, T.J. Ward, the safety's blitzed. Well, Wade Phillips always has a few surprises, too. Here he comes, number 94. Von Miller just runs over the running back. That's Ed Dixon, the tight end, trying to block him. The two safeties who were both injured in the second half of the AFC title game against New England and were not able to play in the last minutes, and that was a big story for the first week leading up to two-week run-up. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting, defense, number 21. It's a 15-yard penalty, first down, Carolina. Oh, keep to leave with a taunting penalty just as the Panthers were going to come off the field again. And he did it right in front of his head coach. Wow. Big penalty. Can't do it. We've seen Aqib Tlaib make that mistake before. You had Carolina reeling, and now you give them this first down to give them a chance to find their rhythm on the offensive side. And you advance the football with the penalty. Yardage out to the 45. Whitaker is the running back. Gets the handle. Tries to go over center, and he's got a pickup of about two. And let's get an update on the Carolina sideline from Evan Washburn. Well, Jim, we saw Jonathan Stewart get rolled up on. It's a left foot injury. His return is questionable. He did receive treatment, but no extra tape job. Again, return questionable with the left foot for Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan Stewart, their featured back alone this year for the first time after sharing it for so many years with D'Angelo Williams. Second and nine. Set it up to Philly Brown, and he's able to take it across the 50 to the Denver 49, pick up a five. Coming up on the Chief Super Bowl today halftime report, join J.B., Tony, Bart, Boomer, and Coach Cower for highlights and analysis of the first half, all coming up on the Jeep Super Bowl today halftime report. Well, you see, anytime you put this talent that Denver has on the defensive side, it is talented, it's fast, it's deep. Then you put a good scheme with it, which Wade Phillips has, you get greatness. That's what we've seen from him, or we did during the regular season so far here in the playoffs. Denver has sacked Newton on the last two third down occasions. Third and four, and in and out of the arms of Kotri as he was hit by Bradley Roby. 
Talked about it in the opening, the three best, the, the best trio of corners. Number 29, Bradley Roby, good technique on the outside, sees Cam Newton throw the football and just beats Cotri to it. But you take Roby, Chris Harris, Aqib Tlaib, hard to name a group of three guys in this league better than that. Nortman will try to pen the Broncos. J.J. Jansen snaps it back. Norwood back deep for Denver. Arm in the air and secures it at the 12. Ten nothing, Denver. Now let's take a look at our 360 eye vision. Well, just watch Von Miller. Mike Rimmers leans forward, and Von Miller. You know, you can watch all the film you want. Watch it on TV. But if you haven't played against a guy in the league, you got to. There's a feeling out process, and I'm sure some of these Carolina offensive linemen have gone to the sideline and go, "Hey, they are fast, and they're good." from the five. It's it into the arms of Sanders. He's got seven. That 2011 draft, there were a lot of great players that came out of that one. And just look at the first five here. Pretty solid picks there. Julio oh, Jones was in that first round. J.J. Watt was the 11th pick. But one, two. Meeting here today and already having met once in the backfield that led to the game's only touchdown so far. Second and three for the Broncos from the 20. It's Anderson, and that's plugged up right away for no gain. K1 short in the middle that time, number 99. A little bit of just when you talk about the Carolina defense, which happens in all football teams. You know, you talk about Luke Keekley, the speed of Thomas Davis. But the reason they're allowed to run free is because of the interior line play of K1 Short, Short, and Star Lotulalele. Third and three, and here they come. It's Keekley who gets to Manning back at the nine. Favorite blitz, sending these linebackers up inside, and Luke Keekley just so fast. Timed it perfectly, too. His postseason play, just a huge highlight reel with pick sixes in both games. The first in NFL history, postseason history, to have back-to-back -back games with interception returns for touchdowns. And here's the return try with a flag out. Again, gets spun around at about the 41. You know, Jim, they got what they wanted, a good defensive stand to get field position for their offense. And another mistake by Carolina. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 21. A 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Carolina. These two quarterbacks, both overall number one picks, but 13 years separate the two. It's the largest age margin for starting quarterbacks in any Super Bowl game. Newton coming in with 50 total touchdowns, regular and postseason, rushing and passing on the year. That 50 number. He had 50 touchdowns he accounted for for Auburn his senior year when he led him to a national title. And here, the 50 number pops up again in this game. And that was a little shaky on the give to Stewart, who returns, but gives back a yard. Yeah, you're right. Little shaky. Cam Newton trying to hang on to that football as long as he can. he got to be careful not to cause a fumble. But so far, this Denver defense, just too fast. Wow, nice. 
recovery there by Stewart. The football looked like it was out. Too fast to be blocked right now by the Carolina offense. Stewart, three carries, two yards, second and 11. Last minute, quarter number one. Time for Newton to throw, and he's got Philly Brown on the sideline and a long gain for the Panthers. Big point in the game. Can he throw the football to the sidelines against one-on-one -on -one coverage? And Aqib Tlaib, you've got to respect the speed of Corey Brown and Ted Ginn. Nice throw that time by Cam Newton. Philly they're going to have they're going to have a lot of those situations though, Jim. Outside one on one, can he make the throw and catch? Billy Brown with a catch for 20. Panthers had a total of nine yards before that one that went for the big game. This one will get back a couple as Stewart makes the catch and is bounced out by Brandon Marshall. He's going to close out the quarter too. That's the end of the first quarter with the Broncos leading it 10 0. We'll return to Levi Stadium after these messages. You're watching Super Bowl 50 on CBS. The first quarter for Carolina that didn't feel anything like what they had experienced in the divisional round and the NFC title game, where they got off to lightning fast starts. Second and 11, second quarter begins, and Cam is taken off. He's got right there near the first down. He slides, gave himself up, so they're going to get him to come on back. It's going to be a gain of 10 or 11. You got to be disciplined on the defensive side when you're going to come and you're going to blitz at Cam Newton. Somebody has spread it out or somebody's got to be spying the quarterback. This run goes for a first down. You know, you look at this first, you look at the first quarter, Jim, a couple things. The Denver defense has stopped the run game and Cam Newton's option let him get free. And the Carolina Panthers did not take advantage of some throwing opportunities down the field. Movement on the right side with Olsen and Dixon. They both jumped early. False start. Offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. DeMarcus Ware is wearing a mic. Let's listen in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He went through there. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna go and get him. That's what I'm talking about, baby boy. That's what I'm talking about. Here's a first and 15. Time for Newton this time. Rolling out. And he's got another good game. Picked up by Vaughn Miller and driven to the ground and some of the Panthers on the sideline didn't like it including Tony Ely well I love the fact that Cam Newton gets out of there only guy you can see maybe open is Greg Olson going across the middle but the coverage we've talked about it he slips and fall falls and Cam Newton once again gets outside containment For the Denver Broncos, they said, man, if we can stop the run game, which they've done, they love the fact that they can cover, or they think they can cover, these wide receivers down the field. That went for 12. It's a second and three. And Stewart is stopped one yard short of the first by Trevathan. And let's take a look at the next-gen stats presented by Mercedes-Benz. Wow. Well, you see how fast Cam Newton is. They got him faster than all those linebackers. I don't know if they are. He's, I'll just tell you, the size and the speed of quarterback, one of the big concerns for Denver. They have a lot of different defenses ready for it. So far, I haven't seen some of those I saw in practice yet. Third and one, an unbalanced line for Carolina. And he's going to swing it back the other side, and he's got... Greg Olson. Panthers offense putting something together for the first time. Yeah, really good play call by Mike Shula. Unbalanced line, and you call it the old shoot screen because the defense is chasing. Cam Newton going to the right. Olson goes across the field. Look how long he sold it and blocked. And that's what finally allowed him to be open for the throw. 
their first trip of the Super Bowl into the red zone at the 15. That last play gained 19. The drive that began back at the Carolina 27. Ham has Billy Brown and he's twisted out of bounds on a face mask call. Tlaib's going to be flagged for the second time in this half. No doubt he grabbed the face mask to tackle Corey Brown. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Defense, number 21. Finds half the distance to the goal line. First down, Carolina. From right to left, you see Corey Brown gets a step on Aqib Tlaib. Tlaib just making sure he gets a tackle. Really dangerous play. They mark the football as you look at our pylon cam inside of the one. Both Stewart and Tolbert in the backfield. First and goal. It's Stewart. And in for the Carolina touchdown. Give confidence that drive to this Carolina offense. A couple Cam Newton runs, a tremendous play call by Mike Shula with the unbalanced line and then sending Greg Olson across the formation for a big game. How about that jump? Yeah, his foot must be okay. Look at that elevation. That's the last time I saw that, it's like you don't see that jump play too much in the NFL anymore because defensive linemen make so much penetration. Looked like Marcus Allen going. I was going to say, and that parade of MVPs that you were a part of, that reminded you so much of what Marcus used to do on a regular basis. Good news, extra point is good. But there is a flag on the PAT. Might have been Tlaib again. He might have been offsides here. Nonetheless, it's a 73-yard touchdown drive by Carolina. Offsides, defense, number 21. Yep. That five-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The PAT is good. A rough start here for Tlaib. Flag three times. Jonathan Stewart. He's got a Super Bowl touchdown, and he's got Carolina on the board. The Panthers take it down the field. Things certainly opened up with Cam running the football a couple of times. Two rushes for 23 yards. He was four for four passing on that touchdown drive that ended with the Jonathan Stewart dive over the top from a yard out. And they're kicking from the 40 because of the Toledo side penalty. And that bounces through the back of the end zone. Serious hang time here for Jonathan Stewart. It really is. Good blocking up front. Just allows him the chance to, to get his legs under, his feet under his shoulders and jump so high to get that touchdown. Great job by Stewart. Here's what you found out. Carolina, you stopped the run game. You still got to stop the passing of Cam Newton and him running from drop back situations. switches things up at the line of scrimmage. And he's tripped up. He's down. Was he touched down? Now the ball squirts out of his hands and is picked up by Virgil Green. The incomplete, throwing it underhanded. Well, there was that one point, too, where he slipped, and you wonder, did Ely touch him at all? No. Nope. Well, Ron Rivera, did Coney Ely touch Peyton Manning going down? Yes, yes he, he did. did. So. Yep. Ron Rivera would have to challenge that. And again, it goes as an incompletion. 
And, and the challenge flag is out. He's, he's still steaming about the first challenge that he threw out there and got the incompletion to Jericho Cotri. Don't you think? Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's... Well, you think about what that set up in the end. It, later in that series, after they didn't win the challenge, that led, of course, to the strip sack and fumble recovery touchdown for Denver. And what appeared to us to have been a catch. So Rivera's going to challenge this. Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field that the quarterback was not down by contact prior to the forward pass. Definite contact. That's Coney Ely who got a hand on Manning. Back at about the 13. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. Raise one to right now. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, June 3rd. And by Mobile Strike, download and play now free from the App Store. The beautiful views along the coast of Northern California, all the way south of here past Pebble Beach into Big Sur and beyond. But this is going to be an easy overturn here, but it's going to be the last challenge. After review of the play, the quarterback was touched and went down by contact at the 13-yard line. It will be second down from that point. Carolina will not be charged a timeout. However, they are out of challenges. That's the big question. You're four minutes into the second quarter, and you cannot challenge anything the rest of the way. Was it worth the seven yards? Me, yes. Take it right now. You put this offense in a really tough situation. It's obvious pass. You're starting to dominate a little on the defensive side, I think, up front. Peyton Manning been under pressure by pass rushers. They didn't pick up a blitz. Ron Rivera does everything just by his instincts, and it's, hey, he's got a chance to turn his game around, so he took advantage of it. Second and 17, Demarius Thomas is on the near side. Norman is on him, who backs off a little bit. Gives him seven-yard separation. Thomas has not been targeted so far. And almost intercepted by Norman, who came over to help out on the coverage of Norwood. Really a terrific play by Josh Norman. Here goes the slot receiver. Watch Josh Norman here. And in at the last second, you think Peyton Manning has got a big completion. But Josh Norman fast enough. And, of course, long arms helped him do his responsibility perfect. Third and 17. Complete. Luke. Great hit, Keekley on Demarius Thomas. Again, Keekley, Thomas Davis. How about some of the hits and plays they make? They read the quarterback so fast and so well that you see plays like this. You think, why, where do they get all the turnovers? Because of plays like that. Third straight, three and out for the Broncos. And now Colquitt to punt. 227 punts in Super Bowl history. There's never been one return for a touchdown. And this one won't either. As Ginn catches it on the sideline. A flag is on the field back at the 15. Colquitt with a booming 52-yarder. Never gave Ginn a chance to do anything with it as he angled it to the sideline and deep. Ineligible man downfield, kicking team number 51. It's a five-yard penalty, and in the kick, first down. Earlier tonight, NFL Play 60 super kid, 11-year-old Marlo Mosley, made the ultimate handoff when she delivered the game ball to the officials to begin Super Bowl 50. To learn more about NFL Play 60, visit NFLRush.com. I don't know why you wouldn't, if you had the option, re-kick it that far deep instead of taking the five on the other end, and I think it's going to be given a second thought. Yeah, they're retreating. 
back to the Denver side of the field. Demarius Thomas is shaken up. And Colquitt will have to punt again near his own end zone. Uh, that's a big deal, Demarius Thomas being in that situation because I think one of the good matchups that we have in this game, Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas against the defensive back of the Carolina Panthers. Aaron Brewer is the long snapper. Sends it back. And Colquitt didn't catch this one. It hits right at the 50. And let's get a report down on the sideline from Evan. Well, Jim, the Panthers are managing their footwear and their footing in this second quarter. At least four players have changed to a different pair of cleats, most notably and most recently Greg Olson switching to a pair of cleats. Also seen uh, athletic trainers putting new studs on some of those cleats. So managing the footing on this field. Jim? Well, that penalty, thank you, Evan. That cost Denver 14 yards and gives the Panthers field position at their own 49. That's Stewart for two. Malik Jackson has him wrapped up, and we're going to go back to the other sideline, to the Denver sideline, Tracy Wolfson. Well, Jim, you heard Evan talk about the footing. It's happening on the Denver sideline as well. Ronnie Hillman slipped earlier in the game. Emmanuel Sanders, extremely frustrated, looked at me and pointed to the cleats afterwards and told his equipment manager to get him a new pair. I was told that they've replaced this field three times, one before the season, once in November, and then in January by the NFL. Jim? It's a pass again, and he's looking to throw it himself. But it breaks down, and the Broncos were there to shove him out. Harris. Well, Malik Jackson, he was all over the plate. Von Miller also not fooled by the backward pass. It's going to go this way. Then watch the inside. Malik Jackson take Cam Newton to make sure there's no throwback. Grabs him. Good job by Ted Ginn not making a bad decision in a situation like that. It's a loss of four, and it goes in the books as a sack for the Denver defense. Their third, third and 12. Yeah. That's knocked down. That's Darian Stewart jumping in front of Olsen. Well, one thing they did that time, the Denver defense, they stay in their lane. So, in other words, Cam Newton, even if he didn't find this throw over the middle, had nowhere to run. And as hard as he throws it, what a good job by Stewart. Breaking on the football and knocking it down. Nortman to punt again. You saw some of the rushers for the Broncos trying to get around the edge, and they lost their footing, too, on their way to try to get to Cam. Nortman had bodies around him. He hits the deck, no flag. And Orwell, he has not tackled yet. Gets past Dixon. Gets to the 50. He's running down the sideline. And it's tackled from behind. Addison brings him down. But Jordan Norwood in traffic somehow got away from the Panthers. I think the Panthers thought it was a fair catch and they're trying to hold up. You saw Jones with a little contact with Norwood. You're right, they had to have thought it was a fair catch signal, which we never saw. And down the sideline, he goes. 61-yard return. That or they worried about interference. But how about Addison, number 97, hustling down the field and making that tackle to save the touchdown. Sets up the Broncos at the 14. Manning in the pocket. Dumps it off to Anderson. And again, Keekly is on his back. That was the longest punt return in Super Bowl history. I just mentioned a short while earlier, there had never been a punt return for a touchdown in the history of the game. They didn't get one here either, but it is the longest one ever. No fair catch. Good job by Norwood taking advantage of that situation. Denver, second and three inside the seven. 
It's Anderson. Jump cut, and down he goes. One yard short of the first. Coleman on the tackle. Norwood, who was out of football entirely in 2013, then missed all of last year in a comeback attempt with an ACL injury, blew out his knee in the preseason. Sets him up here now. Sets up the Broncos, third and one well, at you, the five. You would think well, Gary Kubiak running down the field to call a timeout here, and he gets it. But as I was looking at that situation, Jim, you would think maybe the Denver Broncos would run the football. If they didn't make it, it'd give them a fourth down try if they wanted to play it that way. Well, it was a big point of emphasis in our meeting with Manning this week, and really throughout the playoffs, has been about red zone production. They got a big third and one coming up, and you might be right. They could be looking at it. They don't get it here. They could entertain the idea of going for it on fourth then. I think they would you know I think it's a situation where you kind of see the flow of the game and I, I think Denver's defense they see how explosive Cam Newton can be running the football throwing it down the field so good situation situation right here to think about two runs in a row if you need it Anderson the running back Give it to C.J. Anderson, and he's tackled short of the first as Jared Allen. One Bay Area guy tackles another. Allen plays down in Morgan Hill in the Los Gatos area, tackling Vallejos. C.J. Anderson, here comes fourth down, and the offense is still out there. Jared Allen beat his man to the outside, made the tackle. And you look at this situation here, I like Gary Kubiak being aggressive. If you don't make it, your defense, you got the Carolina offense backed up. Fourth and less than a yard. Gonna run it, Anderson. He fights for it on second effort and there's a flag in the pile. It looked like Carolina at first glance was gonna stop him for a loss. He's able to squeeze through a tiny opening but it doesn't Holy matter. Offense, number 65. 10 yard penalty, replay fourth down. Luis Vasquez flagged for that, and that makes now Brandon McManus the only option. What, 65 Vasquez against K1 Short, just grabs him, turns him, throws him to the ground. That's a good call. Vasquez, one of only six starters for Denver that started two years ago in Super Bowl 48, along with Demarius and Peyton on the offense. Malik Jackson, who had the touchdown earlier. Sylvester Williams and Danny Trevathan. Only six from two years ago. Starters in both 48 and 50. 33 yard try coming up. Field goal is out of line. McManus good again. But twice it gotten into the red zone and settled for field goals. This one set up by Norwood's longest punt return in Super Bowl history. Visit NFLShop.com after the game for the largest selection of Super Bowl 50 championship gear at the official store of the NFL, NFLShop.com. So the Broncos have a total of three first downs, all coming on their first drive, but they have three scores, a couple of field goals and a defensive touchdown. Well, yeah, this defensive front for the Carolina Panthers Big start to dominate the offensive line. And of course, Carolina's got to look up and go. All the mistakes we made were only down 13 to 7. Exactly. But you know, the offense for Carolina, it's all Cam Newton right now. Down the field, nobody open. He's making things happen. Scrambles out of there. So that's kind of slowed the pass rush down a little bit. You can see that when you're going to play man coverage down the field, nobody's watching the quarterback. Then if Cam Newton takes off, he's going to get big yards. Six out of 11 passing for 63 yards.
incomplete. Off the fingertips, Jonathan Stewart. Cam Newton off target that time. Not that it was going to be a big gain, but it would have been enough. You know, you, you're just looking to pick up three, four yards. Bozzi Whitaker comes back in and moves over to Cam's right side. Cam carries it out. The fake and the keep, and the ball is on the ground, and it's picked up by Vaughn Miller, but they rule him down. They rule Newton down, and now a flag comes out. They ruled him down after a pickup of 14. Ruling on the field is that the runner was down by contact at the 34-yard line. After the play, unnecessary roughness, personal foul, defense, number 97 for a late hit. 15 yards in the end of the run, first down Carolina. It's the third personal foul penalty on the Denver defense. This one on Malik Jackson. Ruling on the field, Newton was down. It's Vaughn Miller reaching in, trying to strip it the whole way. Looks like he's down. Yep. Of course, really good job by Michael Orr trying to retaliate, pulled himself up at the last second, not to hit Malik Jackson and get a personal foul on himself. From the 49, that's Tolbert. And he fumbles, and Trevathan is there with the recovery. Tolbert had lost one but recovered it in the first quarter, but this time it's Trevathan who has the football. Another mistake made by Carolina. The hit by Darian Stewart forced it. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by Coca-Cola Mini. Sometimes you just want a little Coca-Cola. And by Independence Day, resurgence June 24th only in theaters cost a little coin to not only attend the game but uh, put up a little television spot and all sorts of things uh, astonishing following that every year grows a little bit larger for this championship game in its 50th edition Tolbert turning it over and recovered by Trevathan Carolina minus two now in turnovers in this game after leading the league in margin all season long, that's off the hands of Demarius Thomas. Should have had it. Although Norman can convince you that he had a lot to do with that incompletion as well. It's almost time for the Pepsi Super Bowl 50 halftime show, a musical celebration of past, present, and future featuring Coldplay with special guest artists Beyonce and Bruno Mars. Don't miss it. Yeah, Carolina was plus 28 in takeaway margin regular and postseason coming into this game they had a fumble that led directly to a touchdown and then this last one a fumble by tolbert on the denver side of the field second and ten and anderson able to break away into the secondary breaks another tackle and out of bounds at the carolina 25 he actually got away from Luke Keekley and takes it 34 yards. Watch the center 61. Paradis gets Luke Keekley, allows C.J. Anderson to get through that line of scrimmage and make that run. Then he got away from Trey Boston. Keekley over pursues just a little bit. C.J. Anderson, big, strong, powerful runner. Broke that tackle, big game. And the first down carry, that's Hillman. And Keekley this time is not going to let anybody get away from him. Gain of three. Well, you know, Jim, just go back to C.J. Anderson. He got off the plane, landed here in San Francisco. He walks down the ramp. Who's down at the bottom of that ramp? But Terrell Davis, a past Super Bowl MVP who won the Super Bowl MVP award when the game was played in his hometown of San Diego. C.J. felt, hey, he was trying to tell me something. <laughs> He's been dreaming all week, he told us, of having the big game and doing what Davis did. 
second and seven. And right away, they're on him. Matulale hammers Hillman. And a loss of one, maybe two. Anytime you run inside, Latulale, K1 short, so big. They're so athletic to be. And Latulale is, look at the arms. That says it all. Just pushes blockers all over the field. Tough to run inside. Anderson comes back in for this third and eight play from inside the 25. Fowler in for his third snap of the game. Number 16. From the gun. Man. Almost. Yes, he is. He's picked off. What a catch by Ely, who's still on his feet. And look at Ely. All the way out to the 39. He bobbled it, clutched it again, and has the interception. They do this a lot, the Carolina defense. They will drop defensive linemen back in coverage. 94 on the outside. Boy, nice job of reading where the receiver is. Sanders, I think Peyton Manning saw him. He just tried to anticipate the throw so much, he couldn't hold the football back and let it go. Ely made the great interception. Boy, he pulls it in with one hand. Kwan Short's going to try to get a block on Peyton. I believe Peyton Manning thought Sean McDermott loves what he just saw. That Ely was never going to turn around, but he turned around so quick he was able to pick up the football and make that interception. Manning's first interception in his last 164 postseason passes. Bam! In trouble. Able to get it to the sideline and pass the line of scrimmage, and it's incomplete. Jackson and Miller were all over him. Wade Phillips doing a great job of just mixing things up, different looks. This time it's a blitz, so you got to block. you got five guys out there, offensive linemen, blocking one-on-one -on -one against the best pass rushing unit in the NFL. Wade Phillips. His return to Denver, co-assistant coach of the year in the league, along with Hugh Jackson, who went on to become, after the season ended at Cincinnati, with Cleveland head coach. It's Whitaker, and he is decked by both Sylvester Williams and Derek Wolf. No gain. Coming up, the Jeep Super Bowl today halftime report. JB will be there with the crew, Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower, for highlights and analysis of the first half. It's all coming up on the Jeep Super Bowl today. Halftime report. I have not seen Cam Newton under this kind of pressure all year long. Usually when you watch a Carolina Panthers game, plenty of space around their quarterback. He has extra time to throw it down the field. Today, he's either under pressure, and when he does get time, the receivers are not separating for him. Carolina one out of six on third down. It's third and 10. He guns it. And it's incomplete. It was a battle for the football. Bradley Roby was in there to break it up from Brown. It's one of their favorite plays. And this football down the middle goes Ted Ginn. Here comes Philly Brown across. But Cam Newton was under so much pressure, he hung in there as long as he could. And just throws it a little off the mark. That was a battle for the football between two old Ohio State University Buckeye teammates. This one bounce into the end zone and a touchback for only a net of 41. Go, Peyton's go, fourth go. time in the Super Bowl with four different coaches. Won it with Hall of Famer Tony Dungy. Tony, congratulations. Finding out the news last night. Jim Caldwell lost to the Saints out of Miami in that one. And then John Fox two years ago. Now Gary Kubiak. Well, we've done all three playoff games, or the first two and a half of the Denver Broncos offense. Peyton Manning coming back in week 17, the second half, to help them beat San Diego. That last throw was probably 
his first bad decision with the football when it's in his hand. He's got Thomas for the first time, and Thomas carries a couple of Panthers with him for a game of eight. You saw Gary Kubiak over there, and he would become the first to ever win a Super Bowl as a head coach for a team that which he also played. He played in three Super Bowls, was 0-3 as a player, but has won three rings as an assistant. One in San Francisco, two under Mike Shanahan in Denver. Second and two. And again, they wrap up Anderson in a hurry. And what a lot of people don't know is Kubiak has the highest completion percentage for any quarterback in Super Bowl history. Really? Yeah. You know, we always hear about some guy that went 22 out of yeah. 25. Well, he got outplayed in that game by Gary Kubiak, who went four for four. four. You know, Gary brought that up to us <laughs> the other day and just stuck it right to me. That was good. Yeah, he did. I might have teed him up a little bit. Well, maybe. The quarterback numbers. Most of these completions of the short variety as we approach the two-minute mark, second quarter, and a third and two. Thomas unable to get off the defender in time. It was Norman who was tangled up with him for a moment, and again, Denver's offense stalls. Well, it's just, it's... Thomas against Josh Norman outside, and once again, Josh Norman won. Josh Norman really have it, has had a terrific first, first half for the Carolina defense. Broncos have missed now on their last seven third downs. Colquitt. This earns a fair catch from Ginn. Back at the 19 with Latimer there. Just in case, monitoring. 53-yard punt. We're at the two-minute warning. And Denver leads it, 13-7. Here's a look from our Bud Light Skycam. Jim Nance with Phil Sims, Tracy Wolfson, Evan Washburn, Mike Carey, and Jay Feely if needed for any special team situations. And this is what uh, Rivera talked to us about this week. He always defers. They won the toss today. Thomas Davis had said all week, I'm going to call tails, and that's what it came up. And they wanted this chance for back-to-back -back possessions to close out the first half and get the football to start the third. What they have found out here today, the Denver defense so far against Carolina's offense, Denver's defense is as good as advertised. Each team with two timeouts. piece of tackling there by Chris Harris who missed that Super Bowl game two years ago as did Vaughn Miller they both had late season ACL injuries so this was extra special for those two integral parts of this uh, Denver defense even as big as Cam Newton is against this defense when you start going sideways you are going down they're too fast and great tacklers second and seven and no play Derek Wolf was another defender a couple of years ago who missed that game against Seattle. He was out with illness. False start. Offense. Number 73. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay second down. He's put one minute 26 seconds on the game clock. One, two, six. Well, these are the guys that they missed and they got throttled. The Broncos did. Came in as this offensive. Juggernaut and got beat 43 to 8 by Seattle and immediately John Elway went out for reinforcement on the defensive side signing the likes of DeMarcus Ware and TJ Ward. Cam Newton changes the play, thinks it's a blitz. Hakeem Tlaib also was signed after that loss and let's see what happens second and 12 with 125 to go in the half. And Newton's pass thrown in the area of Ginn. Talib was jumping up and up down as if he thought he might have been able to make a play on that football had he turned around just a second earlier. Good throw away that time. Really good disguise by Denver's defense. Cam Newton probably thought, oh, I'm going to have Greg Olson one-on-one, -on -one, but no. Vaughn Miller dropped out in coverage. Double 
Double covered their best receiver. Nowhere, nowhere to throw the football for Cam Newton. Since the touchdown drive, the one in which Newton was four for four, he's missed on his last five throws. And watch these two guys ready to pounce. Six DBs out there and a timeout called by Cam. Carolina takes its second timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, in a lot of ways, this is what you thought the game would be like, that the defenses would star, and you got that play by Miller, recovered by Jackson for the touchdown. Plus, then you got the special teams here. Norwood with a long return to set up a field goal. A couple of turnovers overall. Two fumbles by the Panthers. One Peyton Manning pass intercepted. It's, it's a game of miscues. You, you turn it around to the other side. Look what happened. Peyton Manning threw an interception when they're going in to maybe get a chance to score. They have a fourth down penalty by Vasquez, which was inside the five-yard line. So both teams making mistakes. When Manning threw that interception, they were in field goal range and would have had a chance to go up two scores. Here's a third and 12. Down the field and pulled down. What a catch. That's Funchess. Climbs the ladder for 24. Four-man rush. And really a terrific job by Cam Newton moving in the pocket to get the extra time. And finally, Funchess got open. The coverage was outstanding all the way up to that point. With the rookie receiver from Michigan gives them the longest play of the game. That's off the fingertips. That time of Brown to leave on the coverage. And Cam Newton has tremendous pocket presence. Finally sees Funches down the field. Oh, he ripped it out of the air. But let me harp on it just one more time. The wide receivers, and we talked about in the opening, this Denver trio of defensive backs, Chris Harris, to keep to lead. Bradley Roby, the best in the league. Second and 10. Panthers with one timeout from the 41. And a catch by Olsen. And Ward able to spin him down after seven. Carolina not operating with a whole lot of urgency here as they face a third and three. Well, that might be the reason why. Still too slow. Should have called the timeout to save the time. Newton will keep it, and he'll just drive ahead for the first down and then the timeout called by Carolina. They're last with 18 seconds remaining. Boy, you know, I just, I'll just say this. Can Cam Newton, Jim, I'll ask you, can he keep this pace up? The fact that it's all him, the running plays, hanging in the pocket, taking hits, just like here, third and three. Quarterback run up the middle. You know, this is a such a dynamic young talent that just won the MVP award. And you have to think that this is not some sort of uh, Super Bowl cameo for him. You got to think Cam will be coming back. But he hasn't had a whole lot of reason to smile in this first half because he wears that joy of playing football. And he wears that pretty well most of the time. I saw him back earlier on this very series. He's grimacing as if. He was either exhausted or in a little bit of pain. Well, I think he's pretty tired, but I'll tell you, that was not a very good job of using their time nope. here at the end of the first half. With pressure, able to break away from Miller and get the football down the field incomplete. And again, he was going back to Olsen. Now down to 11 seconds. I know at halftime they're going to have to find some new formations, some new thoughts to help these wide receivers get open down the field. You know, it's not like a, when you watch Carolina play, they're not a rhythm throwing offense. In other words, he's not going to catch and throw a bunch of short passes. Usually he holds on to the football like we've seen here in the first half, gives receivers plenty of time to get open, but not doing it here in this game so far. Second and ten, and that will close out the half as DeMarcus Ware pile drives Cam Newton to the ground. 
on the outside just so fast he talked about it to us the other day he's worked on it so hard and just has gotten better at bending the corner. You see him lean in. Once he leans in, he's going around the tackle. Yeah, he missed all those games because of injury, back injury. He said, you know what? It was the best thing happened to me. I went back and trained. Hey, did more core training than I ever had, and now I'm able to get lower into the quarterback and around the edge faster than I could. Let's go down to Evan. Here with head coach Ron Rivera. Well, their pressure obviously had a huge impact on that first half, that final play there. How do you change that in the second half? Well, you know, what happened right there was because of the situation more than anything else. But changing what is going to happen in the second half is we just can't turn the ball over. We got chances to make plays. We got to make plays. You get the ball to start the second half. What do you think this second half and this game will come down to? Well, really, I think it's going to end up with the team that has the ball last. We'll send it back to Jim. Thanks, coach. All right, thank you. His quarterback. Got sacked four times in that first half. And one of them led to the Broncos' only touchdown with the recovery by Malik Jackson. Coming up, stay tuned for a once-in-a-lifetime performance from Coldplay with other guest stars at the Pepsi Super Bowl 50 halftime show. That's the end of the first half with the score. Denver 13 and Carolina 7. We're back with the Jeep Super Bowl today halftime report. After this message and a word from your local station, you're watching Super Bowl 50 on CBS. The 50th Super Bowl commences. Ball is out, and it's recovered for the touchdown. Vaughn Miller with the script sack. It's Stewart up and in for the Carolina touchdown. And he fumbles, and Trevathan is there with the recovery. Another mistake made by Carolina. Bay Area legend Carlos Santana welcoming us back to Super Bowl 50. And let's take a look at the CBS iVision 360, powered by Intel. Jonathan Stewart. How about that? Might be the wave of the future. No, it uh, could be some technology that could be very useful. That's right. Determining did they cross the plane down the road? Well, that was the touchdown drive for the Panthers, where they amassed 73 of their 140. They got more than half their yardage on that one series. And other than that, the Denver defense has been stout in holding the highest scoring team in football to only seven points. Probably one time both teams really happy for the extra time to rest at halftime. They needed it. Here's the kick to Whitaker. He'll take a knee. And you know, partner, there have been 11 times before this week when the number one defense in the league made it to the Super Bowl, and the team with that number one defense won nine of those 11 Super Bowls. What's the old saying? Good pitch pitching beats good hitting. And what we saw there, Denver's defense, Carolina's offense couldn't block the edge rushers. They couldn't get receivers open. Carolina's got to change some things they do on the offensive side. Keep extra guys in there to block to give Cam Newton more time and maybe give some of those wide receivers an extra beat to get open down the field. They had 12 first downs in the first half versus only four for Denver, but trail it by six. Contact right away at the line of scrimmage, and they push back Jonathan Stewart. It'll be no gain. Stewart now with seven carries for seven yards in the game. And here are the numbers. Oh, look at that. Neither team can throw the football. Pass protection, coverage, lots of reasons for that. I thought we were we were thinking maybe the first team to 24 was going to win the game. That's what our thought was before. But maybe we should lower that sum after that first half. The speed of Denver's defense. Overwhelming Cam Newton. Here's second and ten. And down the middle. He's got Ginn, who's got speed. And he is out of bounds at the 35 of the Broncos. Ted Ginn with his first catch of the night. And it's a big one for 45 yards. Longest play of the game. Right out up top, coming down across. And look at the time. They keep extra blocker in that time. It allowed Cam Newton to step back just a little bit and gather himself and really throw a strike right down the middle of the field. Ken, who played in the Super Bowl three years ago down in New Orleans for the 49ers and was the last to handle the football in that game on a 
free kick. As the Ravens ended up tackling him, pushing him out of bounds and winning Super Bowl 47. Two tight ends in for Newton. And out of traffic, but then there's Ware waiting for him. And the pass is incomplete. He was out of the pocket. I'm not sure that pass got to the line of scrimmage. It was right across the marker, it looked like, but... Top of the screen, Von Miller forces him up, and then Cam Newton strong enough just to hang in there to throw the football and get it out of bounds. And that's been the problem, that big completion to Ted Ginn. We saw an extra blocker in there helping the offensive line out. That's what they need to do. Get a tight end, a running back in there to help this offensive line out. And they threaten into round instead to give it to Whitaker. And he's able to get a quick burst. Running behind Tolbert with a flag out. He ran it for nine or ten. Always wonder these second half starts for teams. They're accustomed to the 12-minute halftime, and this one's 30 minutes and beyond. And just adjusting to that long the field, break. The runner gained enough yardage for a first down. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense, number 70. It's a 15-yard penalty. In the end of the run, it's going to be first and 10 from that spot. Called on Trey Turner. You know, to answer your question, first off, Trey Turner always plays to the whistle. Loves to get that last shove in on anybody he's against. But the extra time at halftime, Jim, the adrenaline that you have during the Super Bowl, the emotions, the energy, all that, you almost need extra time to rest and get ready. There's the push on Antonio Smith by Turner. But it's a first down. It's a first and 10 at the 40. Tolbert for one. Let's get the Panther halftime report what you heard from them Evan well Jim Phil you mentioned that extended halftime I checked in with the Panthers they did not change their routine at all from the regular season and early in these playoffs in terms of halftime and how they would handle it with that extended time now Cam Newton we saw him under duress in that first half looked a bit exhausted maybe a bit banged up he did not receive any extra treatment or IVs at halftime guys well, that's interesting good job Evan you know also it's cooled off quite a bit from the start of the game, too, Jim, so that's going to help the players in this situation. Second and nine. Snap complete. And again, it's Ted Ginn. And he's to the 25 and a pickup of 14. Win at the line of scrimmage as a wide receiver. Watch Ted Ginn. Good job using his hands. Gets a keep to leave his hands away from him and breaks it inside. And of course, when you look at Ted Ginn, he was on a mission all year long to show everybody he can be a full-time starting wide receiver. He has come through with many touchdowns, and you've got to honor that speed. That's why Aqib Tlaib backs off sometimes. Made all kinds of plays in the NFC title game against Arizona, not just catching the football. Newton, he's got Broncos on him right away, and the ball ruled down, even though it was recovered by Michael Orr. It'll be a loss of one, and let's get now the Broncos halftime report from Tracy. Thanks a lot, Jim. Gary Kubiak, not surprised this game is going this way, but he said offensively they need to do a better job on second and short. As for the longer halftime, he said they just followed their normal routine, but they gave their players a little extra rest. He said they're 30 more minutes. Let's keep it going. We've been in games like this all year long. Yes, Jim? they won. Thank you, Tracy. They've won 11 games by seven points or less, an all-time record. Second and 11. And Cam loads it up, and he's got the completion. No, nope. incomplete. That was Kachery with Vaughn Miller covering and able to get it out of his hands. Out and up. Watch it. How about that? Vaughn Miller, the pass rusher, taking a wide receiver down the field. And Carolina showing some new wrinkles here in the second half. We saw the long completion to Ted Ginn, the extra pass protection, the quick throw to Ted Ginn, and that wheel route. So let's help this care, help this offense get down the field so far. Third and 11 from the 26. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. 
flag again is down. That was intended for Olsen with Harris on the coverage, but I saw Bradley Roby with his arms up like, what did I do? There is no foul for a defensive hold on the play. Leading on the field is an incomplete pass. Brings up fourth down. So that's going to bring on Graham Gano. And Cam's looking around like, well, how can that be? Going to be a 44-yard field goal attempt here for Gano. It was 30 out of 36 in the regular season, perfect in the postseason. Nortman to hold, Jansen to snap it, 44 yards. And Gano, his kick, oh, it hits the upright and bounces away, no good. Joe D. Camillus, the special teams coach for the Broncos. Fist in the air. Broncos will take over at the 34. Graham Gano's kick hits the upright from 44 yards out. And the Panthers thought Tlaib had jumped early. They were furious during that break. No flag. Manning. He has Sanders to the 41 of Carolina. Gain of 25, and that's the biggest pass play of the game for Manning. You heard this. This is the matchup I like. Find Emmanuel Sanders down the field. Look at the blitz. Roman Harper was coming too late. Peyton Manning saw the open hole, made the good throw. They had one first down in the last 31 minutes of game time before they got that one to Sanders. That's a gain of two for Anderson. So that's a fifth first down of the game. You know, you got Demarius Thomas, who they've thrown the football at with Josh Norman. And Coach Calvert talked about it at halftime. Look at Emmanuel Sanders. Second and eight. Again, it's Sanders. Ziggin and Zaggin and inside the 20 to the 17. The first player on the field in warm-ups today. Out there alone was Emmanuel Sanders. He's got another 22. Well, here's why he's wide open. It was a blitz up inside. Both guys, here they go. And it is picked up by Denver. They're ready for it. I'm sure at halftime they talked about that one more time. They worked on it all week. Resulted in a big play for Peyton Manning and Emmanuel Sanders. From the 17. Third time in the game they've been inside the 20. You know what, Jim? This is like the start of the game. Couple blitzes. Peyton Manning making throws down the field. Neutral zone infraction, defense, number 95, five-yard penalty, still first down. Let's quickly hear from Jay Feely down there about the missed field goal. What did you see, Jay? Well, Graham Gano missed two field goals and warm-ups going the same way. The wind's drifting a little right. Jim, it's similar to a golfer when you come up early. He told me before the game the key for him was to keep his head down. He didn't do that on that play. First and five, it's Anderson stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Anderson now with 10 carries. On the night for 60 yards. You know, the Broncos started fast and started the game. We saw the opening drive, went down and kicked the field goal. And same thing here. Came out, some new ideas, fixed some of their problems at halftime, especially blitz pickup. Really good job by Gary Kubiak and Peyton Manning. It's a second and five from the 12. the end zone and over the head of Thomas. Portland Finnegan was back there defending. One of Peyton Manning's favorite plays over the year. We saw it. Similar play in the championship game two weeks ago. A little move trying to hit the, he had Owen Daniels two weeks ago. This time they tried it with Demarius Thomas. Defense was all over. 
Thomas with one catch for eight yards. Broncos converted their first third down attempt of the game. They've missed on their last seven. Watch Sanders at the bottom of the screen. Third and five. He's gotten him down here on this drive. And throws it his way, and it's batted in the air incomplete. So once again, another drive breaks down inside the 20. But they'll bring out McManus with a chance to make it a two-score game. When you first see it, watch Sanders coming underneath. Here he is on the outside. Look how fast they recover. Nice play by McBride. Gets in there and knocks it loose. Cortland Finnegan on the initial coverage. This is a 30-yarder for McManus. And he remains perfect in the postseason. 10 for 10 in the playoffs. Began with the, the miss on one side. A couple of completions to Emmanuel Sanders. Got him down deep. And again, McManus is called on for the field. 16-7, Denver. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by the all-new Prius, Toyota, let's go places. Doritos, crash the Super Bowl, celebrating 10 years of fan-made ads. And by Intuit, TurboTax, and a dog named TurboTax.com. Now the football, the game balls made back in the Wilson Sporting Goods plant in Ohio. They try to circulate a new ball in for every play. They can't do it during the hurry up. But at the end of it all, they've got over 100 commemorative balls that were in play in Super Bowl 50. So, Webb takes a knee. Panthers are coming back out, trying to get this offense some answers. Down 16-7. Tonight's next-gen stats are presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Okay, the Panthers break huddle. Come to the line of scrimmage at the 20. Newton, 10 out of 24 for 154 yards. He's run for another 45. Looking for the deep ball. Way down on the field, and it is pulled down. They had two Denver defenders back there, and Brown leaps into the air and makes the 42-yard catch. Well, they went an unbalanced line, trying to give Cam Newton extra time to throw it. Boy, does he stand in there and take a big hit from Shane Ray. But Tlaib, Aqib Tlaib is all over it. So as Ward was Deep getting in position Ward. to make the, uh, the pick, and he just overplayed the length of the pass but the high long throws down the field defensive backs don't see enough of them when they do they don't make good adjustments that was a good example of it right there coming over again he steps back and look at him get away reverse course and able to get four yards out of it You saw Cam hit the deck, and then he reached to that left shoulder. He got hit by Shane Ray. You know, I've kind of talked about Cam Newton a lot here, as we do, but, you know, he can stand in there because of his size with the best of them. If he couldn't run the way he does, he would still be an outstanding NFL quarterback just for his ability to stand in the pocket and some of the throws he can make. Got 200 yards passing right on the number. Second and six. Cutting outside on Stewart. And really, that's the first time he's had any kind of room in this game. And Stewart. With a pickup of five or six. And there is Jerry Richardson. Who caught a touchdown pass from Johnny Unitas back in the 1959 NFL Championship game. First started having this idea of bringing professional football to his native Carolina, circulating the idea back all the way back to 1987. And this is the 21st year of their existence, the second time they've been in the big game. And trying to win it for the first.
Play action. Here they come. Newton got it away. And again, it was DeMarcus Ware. And another hit on the quarterback. Well, they're trying to get these play action passes to throw it down the field. And as you look out here, this is where Cam Newton wants to throw it. But it's not full. And two extra guys in there to give him the time to make the throw. But nobody open, so he has to throw it away. Look how far Ware worked around that offensive line to eventually get to Newton. Second and ten. Down the middle, and it is intercepted by T.J. Ward. Went through the hands again, and he fumbles it. Picked up by Trevathan, who had a recovery in the first half. Trevathan has the football. He threw it so hard that Ted Ginn could not make the catch. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by Jeep. Inspired by 75 years of freedom and adventure. And by Budweiser, not backing down since 1876. This Bud's for you. And look at the evolution as the rings have gotten bigger, bigger and bigger. bigger. I would say this, Broad Carolina's here, defense here. has got to come through here, Jim. They got this Denver offense backed up. Hand off to Anderson. He's going to give him some room. He's still on his feet. And look at him move the pile for the first. He broke the tackle attempt by Thomas Davis and takes it 13 yards. Look, he's a heavy-footed runner. What do, I mean, what do I mean by that? It's just that he could, has good balance. You see, Davis couldn't wrap him up with that nope, broken arm. He tried to knock him down with a shoulder. Yep, so far today, just running through the runners has helped him. That time he needed that arm, couldn't use it. It's Finnegan coming up and stopping him at the line of scrimmage. Discuss tonight's action live with CBS Sports experts now on the CBS Sports app. Get the app at cbsports.com slash mobile. So Ronnie Hillman comes back in. He was not effective in that first half. Three carries minus one. And second and ten. Go. Pressure on Manning. And it's Ely who gets to him for his second sack of the game. Tony Ely gets around the outside. Peyton Manning holds it just a little too long against Michael Schofield. And Schofield in the playoffs, you know, we've talked a lot about him. He has struggled during the year at times, but has been solid during the two playoff victories. That time, Tony Ely just too quick for him. Dangerous spot coming up for this Denver offense. On the other side, you've got that ball hawking middle linebacker, Luke Keekley, who's had pick sixes the last two games, third and 17. They're going to go to the ground with Hillman. Not risk anything, and they got a hold of him after two, and it's Keekley who made the play. Luke Keekley so fast, recognizes the plays, able to get there, makes the tackle. And there's Ginn with seven career return touchdowns, four of them punt returns. Colquitt stands at the two. Ginn's going to have a chance to return it from the 30. Able to sidestep the first hit. A flag is down in the middle of the field. 54-yard boot by Britton Colquitt, who's had a big playoff run, including four punts inside the 10 during the postseason. See Shaq Barrett has shaken up. I don't think the penalty's going to be on Trey Boston. You know, you, you watch this game, you see the score is 16-7, to and you're... The Denver offense 
during the return, personal foul, illegal blindside block on the re return team, number 31. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, Carolina. Denver's offense doesn't turn it over. Is Carolina capable of getting two scores? Here's a look from our Budweiser Skycam. In this quarter, the Panthers have had two plays over 40 yards, amassed 121 yards in the quarter, but have not scored. Almost as much yardage in this quarter as they had in the entire first half. Cleet Blakeman corrected himself. That penalty was on Boston. That backs him to the 19, and that's exactly where they meet Jonathan Stewart for no gain. Derek Wolf, let's get another injury update from the Panthers sideline with Evan. Well, three key ones, Jim. Andrew Norwell, guard, is dealing with a right hamstring injury. He's on the sideline but does not have his helmet. Also, Corey Brown just went into the locker room to be evaluated for a concussion. And also, Fozzie Whitaker went into the locker room with a right leg injury. Mm. Uh, three big ones. Darrell Williams comes in for Norwell. Number 60 left guard. Second and ten. Open. It's Ginn. Steps out at the 30. First down. Ginn, who was a member of the 49ers and then went to the Panthers. He was left alone on this one. He even admits he chased a check. He went to Arizona a year ago. Didn't work out there. They brought him back to Carolina. Never been happier. He's got four catches for 74 yards all in this quarter. Fits this offense very well. They run the football. You need a fast wide receiver to take advantage of defenses that creep up towards the line of scrimmage. And Ted Ginn has done that this year. Does he drop the ball every now and then? Yes. But his value of catching deep ones down the field far outweighs the drops. At the snap off just in time, and they're on him. But Newton's able to get free, and that is ruled incomplete. Going back to Ginn with Harris there defending. Wade Phillips loves to do it. You're just going to see five guys coming at the blitz. So you got to, everybody has to block their man, and the coverage down the field is excellent. What a job by Cam Newton just getting away from the sack. Wade Phillips completely out of football 2014. 21 defensive coordinator jobs were filled before he got the Denver job. His team, his defensive unit, the stingiest in the league all season long. And you're seeing why tonight, as this is whistle dead. And the play clock. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Let's go over to the Broncos sideline with Tracy. Well, Jim, right now, linebacker Shaq Barrett just went back to the locker room. He was being evaluated originally out here by the independent neurologist. They were asking him a series of questions. They were checking his balance. He is now in the locker room right now going through the concussion protocol, Jim. Okay, thank you, Tracy. Second and 15. Fourth penalty this quarter on Carolina. Backs him to the 25. And a completion out to the 32 to his tight end. And his favorite target, Greg Olson, for seven. Good job of hanging in there, making a throw that time by Cam Newton. As you, you watch this, it's just so much pressure on the offensive lineman to hold out the best pass rushing unit in the NFL. And if you're a tackle, you're worried about one thing. Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware, running around me before I can get my hands on him. Third and eight. Here comes the pressure. Nowhere to go. And Newton's down at the 22. Wolf and Miller both get to the quarterback. Von Miller just so fast that they don't have the answer. To the outside. They even make him go 
farther than he usually would, but what a spin move to get back in. Makes contact with Rimmers. Man. That's a fifth sack tonight, Phil. Changed up the formations to help out the offensive line, and it still didn't work. That's more Coming over to field it with a fair catch at the 32, 46-yard punt. 16-7. The Broncos lead it. Denver defense has scored seven points and allowed only seven points. Here's how they scored in the first quarter. Speed, you got speed on defense, which Denver's the fastest defense in the NFL. It causes turnovers. You're there before the offensive guy is ready. Cam Newton never saw Vaughn Miller. The hits. The three turnovers, allowing the longest punt return in the history of the Super Bowl, plus a missed field goal. Watch out! As we're in the closing seconds of the third quarter. And Paige Manning's been in this situation before these, these playoff games. Now his job to be very smart with the football. Anderson trying to get around Owen Daniels, but nowhere to go and no gain on what will be the last play of the third quarter. Sixteen seven Denver leads it after three will return to Levi Stadium after this message and a word from your local station You're watching Super Bowl 50 on CBS We start the fourth quarter the 200th quarter in Super Bowl history and Peyton Manning is 15 minutes away from his 200th all-time win regular season and playoffs would be the first to ever get there that close to the perfect sandoff here's a second and ten completion and it's sanders out to about the 49 and a flag on the back end of it play went for 16. well that's the matchup that we thought we'd see more of today. Emmanuel Sanders. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 33. It's a 15-yard penalty. The end of the run, first down Denver. Remember it was Trey Boston who was flagged for that special teams penalty in the third quarter. This will bring the football all the way down to the 34. Slap the ball out of the hands of Emmanuel Sanders. Actually, the ball's at the 37-yard line. Fifth penalty of the half on Carolina. None so far against Denver this half. Ball comes out of the hands of Manning, and he falls on it. Phil, when we met with Peyton, didn't you get a sense of finality? At the same time, a man at peace. Yeah, no question, Jim. I thought it was very reminiscent of his career, everything he's done in football, the way he wanted to be remembered. He said we've had this peaceful feeling, not only this week, but really the whole year. He's got a second and 15. It's a Tim Anderson, and he's met right away. So he has these peaceful feelings, all of this really in the face of what's had uh, at times its complexities this season, no question more than at any point in his career, learning and playing in a new scheme, getting even booed and benched at home during the season, the first half of the season filled with interceptions, the foot injury that kept him out for six weeks, the HGH allegations which continue to swirl and Peyton continues to vigorously hey, deny here at the please. Super Bowl, but then Run. suddenly things turn around. He comes in, week 17, provided a spark. Third and 14. Ball's out of his hand. And it's recovered by Carolina, it looked like, at midfield. Again, it was Ely, who's had an active game, who knocked it out of Manning's hand. Tony Ely, 94, went around Ryan Harris. He's done it from both sides. He beat... Schofield earlier, this time he beat Ryan Harris. Carolina recovery. Second takeaway of the game for the Panthers.
balloting is now open for the Super Bowl 50 most valuable player. You can go to NFL.com slash MVP or NFL Mobile on your mobile device and vote now. You'll have a voice in that decision. And by the way, Ely just got his third sack of the game. As Newton finds an open man down to the 34, and it's Funches. They're going to be without Corey Brown the rest of the way. He's uh, not past the concussion protocol. And here's the turnover committed by Manning as Ely comes around and strips it away. Recovered by Charles Johnson. Good play action on the first play. Great drive starter when you get this field position. The play action fake, the look off, and then the perfect throw by Cam Newton. From the Denver, 34. It's Stewart off the left side, and we've got a first down to the 22. Beautiful job, Ed Dixon coming across, 84, gets a good block. DeMarcus Ware comes back to get him. Runs him down from behind, ball at the 22. Let's do it again. Works one time, try it again. Seems to be getting stronger as Stewart in the second half. You know, like what they did, a little hurry up there, getting up to the line of scrimmage and staffing the football and going. Change the rhythm of your offense. Of course, they need to. Down nine points, only seven points so far today. Mike Shula, the offensive coordinator, done a good job here in the second half, mixing it up. But the mistakes and turnovers have destroyed this Carolina offense. Mike's dad is here at the game, sitting with that NFL officiating legend Jim Tunney. Second and seven, and here is Tobin for about two. Of course, Mike Shula's father coached in six Super Bowls, including for the last time. 31 years ago, just 14 miles from this stadium on the Stanford campus. In big matchup between Miami and San Francisco. That's right. Uh, right here, big third down, though, Jim. Cam Newton's got to know we're in field goal range. If it's not there, throw it away or run. Third and five. From the 16, the flags are out, and the whistle to rule the play dead. Might have been Michael Orr. False start. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, still third down. Now Michael Orr, he sees the defense starting to creep up. It's going to be a blitz. Both tackles were moving early. Yeah, both did. Michael Orr, who won a ring with the Ravens three years ago and who took Cam's plea, saying, I need you to sign here. I don't want you, Cam told him, I need you. He was quite a pickup this season. Fifth pre-snap penalty of the game, backs him up to the 21. For a third and 10. Got the time, and it's incomplete. And Gens looking around and saying, wait a minute, where was the flag? Roby broke it up. We started today talking about the trio of defensive backs. Bradley Roby, top of your screen, number 29, little contact. A lot of contact, really. Like could have been thrown there, and it wasn't. Bradley Roby got away with one. This is a crucial field goal from 39 yards to bring it to a one-score game. Gano. And the kick is good. The field goal set up by the fumble. Forced by E. Lee. Graham Gano nails it from 39 yards out. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by the next generation Kia Optima. X-Men Apocalypse, May 27th only in theaters. And by Budweiser, don't drive drunk, give a damn and stand with Budweiser. The Golden Game, down to 10-21 to go. And it's 16-10 Broncos. On a fire in 
that speed from Thomas Davis. Coming up the field, it is Caldwell. It's past the first couple of Panthers and is ridden down by Fozzie Whitaker at the 24. One offensive touchdown in this game. One defensive touchdown. And it's 16-10 Broncos. Let's take a look at Next Gen Stats presented by Mercedes-Benz. Well, you have speed at the linebacker position. Thomas Davis gets outside, covers a lot of ground, and then Luke Keekley on the blitz. So quick, nothing Peyton Manning can do. And he to the defense, the linebackers, they're the stars because they have good up front people that protect them and let them run free and make all those plays. First down, good throw, Anderson. And he's tackled by Charles Johnson, who we gave credit to on the fumble recovery, and, and they changed it officially a short while later, giving Ely the recovery and the strip. Very typical play, blitzed by the linebacker, Charles Johnson drops off in coverage. Good job by him. Picked up two, making it second and eight. Trying to get a running start, but got knocked down by Latulale after another two-yard pickup. Denver's been in this situation so many times where their defense has been outstanding, and the offense is just trying to find a way to get this clock to keep it moving to pick up a first down or two and change field position. Go. Missed on their last 10 third down attempts, and it's knocked away by Norman, pass was thrown in the direction of Demarius Thomas, who just does not look like the same player. Well, you know, he doesn't look like the same player, but I just wouldn't throw a Josh Norman. Josh Norman all night long has been near the football, trying to make those plays. But it's been a rough postseason for Thomas, and coming after a 1,300-yard season. Fifth time tonight, three plays and a punt. Again, takes it out of bounds at about the 27. So it's a game that's featured 14 penalties, five sacks, five turnovers, and so far only one offensive touchdown, and it was a thrilling one-yard run. Well, the defense is... They took their two weeks and really took advantage of it. I think really when you talk about it, the Denver defense did because they had to get ready for something they hadn't seen before. Uh, in a league where everybody spreads you out, spreads you out and throws the football, all of a sudden they're seeing the wishbone by this Carolina offense. But they've been ready for it. They've kept Cam Newton from running because of that extra week. And, of course, the biggest thing of all, the talent and the speed. And Stewart. Knocked down, maybe a yard. It's Marshall on him quickly. Talk about Cam Newton running regular season, 39.8 yards. Yet. Well, tonight he's having a better night. And you know, the other thing, Wade Phillips, been in a lot of games. He knows by blitzing, it makes it much more difficult for Cam Newton to run also. He's done that in some key passing situations. He's making him stand in the pocket and throw it down the field. Jack Barrett is back in play. He's on the field, second and ten. And a flag first. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, still second down. And that's the sixth free snap penalty now in Carolina. Well, how about that? We saw it early in the game. Really a game changer under the... So much pressure, which I've watched a lot of Carolina football getting ready for this game and during the year. And Cam Newton gets as much time to throw the football as any quarterback in the league. Well, not tonight. The tackles, all these pre-step penalties. Why? Because they're worried about the speed around the edge. Second and 15. They see it this time. Ball's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Getting a hand on it with Sylvester Williams. 
Good thing that football was tipped. Trying to find Greg Olson. Top of your screen. Just a push on the pocket. Sylvester Williams knocks it down. Look at T.J. Ward coming in front of the receiver for the interception. And again, Cam does not have Corey Brown to work with. He's out for the rest of the game with a concussion. Third and 15. Keep him about three yards short of the first down. Boy, a really good defense. Smart by Wade Phillips. Playing conservative, making throw it underneath. And we've seen this all night long. Watch the hit. T.J. Ward. Chris Harris, a small defensive back. And Harris has been dealing with a tender shoulder for the past three weeks. He just lowered at that time to knock him out and force the punt as we're now past the halfway point of the final quarter. Fair catch signal here. And it's made. Contact with his own man, K.O. No! 40-yard punt. And now the Broncos have the football back. Seven minutes to go and a six-point Denver lead. Super Bowl 50 on CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile. Ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. And by Acura. Precision crafted performance. Learn more at Acura.com. Look at the Golden Gate Bridge. But again, these teams stay down in the South Bay area. Denver practice at Stanford, Carolina at San Jose State. And now all the practice, all season long, all the games coming down to the last seven minutes, leading to this. From the 25, the handoff. That Carolina defensive front doesn't give Hillman any room at all. The two Lillet backs him up two. This is the summary. You're looking for the big highlight play. You, know, you had the defensive touchdown early in the game, forced by Vaughn Miller. 10 sacks, five turnovers, 16 penalties. One offensive touchdown from a yard out and 12 punts. And combined, the teams are four out of 25 on third down. Second and 11. That's Anderson. Again, putting up a fight to get every inch. Latula Lay and McLean on the tackle. You know, you look at what they're doing here, just trying to get that one first down to try to run this clock down. But, you know, Jim, I think since Peyton Manning, when he got hurt, they took him out of the lineup. It was almost a blessing in disguise. He he said over there, first off, he got healthy. But then I think he got a different perspective. He looks out there and he knows, wow, standing over here for all those weeks, I see we have a Super Bowl defense, and you've got to play accordingly. Well, you got to wonder, can he make the big throw now on third and nine? Oh, he's going to run it. Go back to Anderson. What'd you think of that call? Picks up one. Yep, not surprised at all. I, I should have said it. Wouldn't have surprised me if they run the football because they're sitting over watching the same game we're watching. Do you believe if we put the football down there that Cam Newton can march his football team down the field and score a touchdown? So not taking a chance. Pass protection, ball get tipped, whatever. You're here because of your defense. Put it in the hands of your defense. It's been really their formula all postseason. And they wrote it all regular season as well. A lot of hang time with this one. And it bounces over. The head of Latimer and away from Ginn, and they'll mark it at the 24. And we'll take a look from our Budweiser Skycam inside of five minutes to go. When you look at the time on the clock, Carolina has three timeouts. 
Well, Jim, it's one of those situations. We'll wait and see, but if they get a first down or two, then it almost puts them in four down territory. Carolina has always found a way this season. They have, and if I was Denver's defense, make sure Cam Newton on a passing situation is not able to find that running lane and move to throw the football or run. To the ground, to Tolbert. And he's able to get just a yard. Trevathan again on the tackle. There we go, Vaughn Miller against Rivers. Beautiful job, spins inside. Look at the coverage down the field. Nobody open anyway, and Cam Newton is the ball. Snap, looking for a way to get out of trouble. That running play to Tolbert, they were hoping to catch Denver. Surprised, it didn't work. Second and nine, and Newton's pass wide of the mark for Funchess. Panthers moved the football in that third quarter, but didn't score. They had the missed field goal and the interception. They had two pass plays over 40 yards. Well, just to show you what they think of their defense, their pass coverage guys, here we are towards the end of the game. What did Denver do the last play? They blitzed, put the pressure on their corners. The timing was right. It's a third and nine. Rushing four, ball comes out of the hands of Newton. It's on the ground, and it's still on the ground. Picked up by T.J. Ward at the four-yard line. Vaughn Miller did it again. He knocked it out of the hands of Newton. Here he comes, number 58. Vaughn Miller against Mike Rimmers one more time. Cam Newton didn't feel it, didn't step up. The football just taken out of his hand. Cam Newton decides not to dive in there. And yeah, take he backed away football. from it. He, he jumped away instead of jumping into the pile. Yep, I guess he made a decision. It wasn't worth to go in there and get it. Should have dove in, had a chance to recover it. First and goal from the four. Anderson trying to break outside, but that swarming defense is on him. Loss of two. Well, there's no question they're going to run the football here three times. Just work the clock, kick a field goal, put you up two scores. And Vaughn Miller. He's picked up right where he left off against New England, hasn't he? I, I thought there was no way against this offensive line. The crowd noise wouldn't be there. Worried about all the runs with Cam Newton? Wrong. Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware, the pass rush has been outstanding. Von Miller, got to look at him and say, if they win this game, he's got to be the most valuable player. And no question. Second and goal from the six. To Anderson. And he's churning down to about the four. And a timeout is called by Carolina. So here's the fumble, knocked out of his hands by Miller. And then instead of going in there and challenging where for the football, he stepped back. And the ball squirts all the way down inside the five. And Ward comes away with it. His second takeaway, a pick and a fumble recovery in the game for Ward. Well, did he think it was going to be an incomplete pass? Maybe he thought his arm was going forward. I don't think so. I just think he decided not to take the chance to get that recovery. Well, look at the QB hits here tonight. But you know, Jim, when you see that football on the ground, no matter what the situation is, where it is during the season, but especially the Super Bowl, you have to get in there and get that and get that recovery. Because not getting that recovery almost takes their chances of winning this football game away. Third and goal. He's going to go up top, and he's going to throw it through the back of the end zone, but it generates a flag on the Carolina defense, holding on to Demarius Thomas.
Fire the pass, holding defense, number 24. Probably half the distance to the goal line, automatic first down. Double move by Demarius Thomas. Ron Rivera says that was not a catchable ball. Yeah, but you know what? If, if it was holding, it yep. doesn't matter. That's right. And really a good call, Gary. Peyton Manning knew if it wasn't wide open, he was going to throw it high and throw it away anyway. That was Rivera before he saw that it was a defensive holding call and not DPI, defensive pass interference. First and goal. And Anderson. Right back in. And he's in the end zone for the touchdown. Twelve point margin. Peyton's done the math and says we got to go for two here with 3:08 remaining. Anderson not to be denied on that carry. Well, that was some run, and he ran right through Luke Keekley to get that touchdown. Watch number 59. Boy, C.J. Anderson determined. Strong, and as you said early in the game, he thinks he's a running back. He gets better with more carries, and he wears the defense down. Good example of it there on that touchdown run. They're going to review upstairs the touchdown to make sure he wasn't down first. Looks like a touchdown. Anderson's put together a nice game, actually. 20 carries, 82 yards, and a touchdown. And in every playoff game, all three of them, he broke a run for 30 yards plus, including one from 34 yards for 34 yards tonight. Yeah, I think he talked about that to us a little, just saying he's learned to be more patient, knowing if you just keep working hard and doing what we see, these, these type of runs, that sooner or later, he's going to bust one and get those extra yards. Touchdown's confirmed. It's 22 to 10. I think we said for a couple weeks. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a touchdown. Jim, we've been talking about it for weeks, even during the year that you look at Denver and you say this team can go and win the Super Bowl on its defense. Can Good I tell you defense. something? Week one, we had Denver hosting Baltimore in our Friday practice meeting. You looked at our group and said, Denver has a Super Bowl winning defense. You saw it before the first game. Two-point conversion coming up. The drive from a couple out from the gun. And he hits the pass to Fowler to make it 24-10. Fowler. Same thing we just saw to the outside where they got the holding penalty against Josh Norman. Little stutter go to the inside. Beats Roman Harper. It all started with the play, though, by Vaughn Miller when he knocked it out of the hand of Cam Newton. Recovered by Ward. And then Anderson fighting off the likes of Keekley and Davis to cross the plane. Sean McDermott upset about that touchdown. Manning family. Eli Cooper in the foreground, Olivia Archie in the back. Oh boy. 
Little dab a do ya. Didn't think the dabbing and dancing would be coming from the Denver bench. Yeah, that's right. Think about it two years ago. The Denver team was all about offense. Two years later, it was all about the defense. Coming up, the Toyota postgame show with J.B., Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower. Highlights and analysis as well as the presentation of the Lombardi Trophy. And we'll find out who's named Super Bowl 50 MVP. It's coming up on the Toyota postgame show. Here's the CBS iVision 360 on the touchdown. Tipped away. That Denver defense in full lockdown mode. And partner, I'm going to give you a little more credit. You said at the AFC Championship game, you said first team to 20 wins. It was a 20 to 18 <laughs> final. You right. said it on this air tonight. You thought that first team to 24 would win. And 24 is the number right now well, for the Broncos. Yeah, that's, well, thank you. But, you know, at halftime, I thought there was, after what we saw, you get to 24 because of the defensive plays. No question about that. All the opportunities Denver's defense has created. And it's Jackson. And then Ware wrapping him up at the five. You know, we talk about Von Miller, Demarcus Ware, but it's just the inside players. We didn't give them enough credit tonight. 97, Malik Jackson. DeMarcus where everybody's chasing Cam Newton. That's the seventh time that Newton has been sacked in this game. And the second one by Ware, the future Hall of Famer. Getting to taste something very sweet late in his career. Third and 24. In the end zone. It's away for a moment from Miller and now lobs it out of bounds. Just nothing, nothing there at all. Boy, Cam Newton took a really big hit at the end by Derek Wolf. I would I think it's easy to say this is probably the biggest pounding and punishment he has taken in his career. And he's absolutely livid that that was not roughing the passer. I don't think it was. He was outside the pocket. Derek Wolf hit him with one step. They're going to punt here with 2.08 to go in fourth and 24. They're going to punt, try to use their timeouts. Only got two. Yep. Two minute warning. Ron Rivera says this gives me a better chance of thinking we're going to get it on fourth and 24. Well, there's no one back there for Denver. Finally, touchdown at about the 35-yard line by Kurt Coleman. So just 157 to go. We've reached the two-minute warning. And they did some really big wins. Yep, they I let it really bounce. It ate up more time. No it got inside the two minutes. No we need some really nice things. We need some really big wins. I got a really... The Lombardi Trophy, soon to be presented. See Joe Namath in the background, Terrell Davis. And have some of these legends that are going to be a part of that presentation. Lynn Swan, you saw him back there. 157 to go. Panthers can only stop it twice. Anderson does not want to go out of bounds, and he falls at the line of scrimmage. So is this it? Is this it for Peyton? <laughs> oh, I did this last it's gotta year. Be. I was wrong. It's got to yes, be. It's got to be. How could you have it end any better than this if you're Peyton Manning? No, it's the, to, to fight through a complete change of philosophy on the uh, uh, for the football team on the offensive side, to go through that injury, get back in there, which almost was a miracle in itself in the 17th game of the year, and finishes it off. There's only been one Hall of Fame quarterback, one eventual Hall of Fame quarterback, who ever retired after winning the Super Bowl, and that's John Elway. 
four. Peyton took the field today. John was the oldest to ever play in this game. Peyton soon to join his brother with two Super Bowl titles. John Elway, two years ago, after they lose the Super Bowl, starts making the transition into this team we see right now. Last time out called by Carolina. Peyton told us, I'm still a member of the band. I'm not the lead singer all the time, but I can still sing a few solos. That's, yeah, that's right. That was a good analogy. Coming up, the Toyota postgame show. JB, Tony, Bart, Boomer, and Coach Cower for highlights and analysis. I'm going to have the most thrilling three minutes of my year trying to make it down there in time for the Lombardi Trophy presentation. But you made it for the MVP thing. I made it easily. Yeah. You want to lose five pounds? Go for it. I need to. Plus, we'll find out who's named Super Bowl 50 MVP in the Toyota post-game show. Miller! Don't hurt yourself because, you know, congratulations on your new son. So I want to make you what a week. stay healthy. Super Bowl week starts the birth of my son, Jameson. February 1. He's going to be two yards shy of a first. And he'll run it down to about a minute left. Cam Newton, never seen a defense like that before. That's right. I think they knew coming into this game, kind of talked about it. You can watch on TV. You can study all those tapes and everything, but you don't understand the speed of this Denver defense until you see it in person. Cam Newton and the Carolina offense, they found out. It's faster than it looks on TV. And timeout just before the play clock ran out. And off the field, he walks. you got to think one last time. Josh Norman very openly talked about his admiration. It was his, his favorite team growing up was the Colts. His favorite player was Bob Sanders. Second favorite player was Peyton. Well, you know, you talk about Peyton Manning. Let me just say this. We did ask him about well, how do you want to be remembered, and I thought his answer, of course, was just perfect. He goes, I want to be remembered as being a good teammate, respected by all the coaches and my peers. And I want everybody to know I love the game of football. Now, he of said that. He was choking back tears when he said it. Was. And that was really his last point of emphasis. I just want everyone to realize how much I love football. They got pretty evidence in the play. So Carolina gets it back without a timeout to play with 54 seconds to go. Really is an amazing story, this Denver team. What they went through during the season. Get Brock Osweiler, you see him there, credit. He started seven games and went five and two in that stretch. Brought him back from 14 down against New England in the regular season and Cincinnati to win in overtime. I don't know if anyone ever saw the script, though, that Peyton would come back from the foot injury, come back as a backup, re-enter the game. Week 17, when it was a turnover-filled start for the Broncos. Give them a spark. Had they lost that game, they would have entered the playoffs as a five seed instead of a one. And it's lateral by Andre Wilbur to Whitaker. Of course, the game's not over yet, but I'll just say this. How about week 17, halftime, Gary Kubiak wags his finger at Peyton Manning. Peyton's going, oh, he wants to know something about coverage or what's going on in the game. He goes, are you ready? Peyton said yes. Got to give Kubiak credit how decisive he was on that day. As the pass is going out of bounds. And Kubiak, what a return to his football home. And he gets doused here. He's going to become the first, again, to ever win the Super Bowl as a head coach for the same team he played for. Just think about it. Two years ago, he's fired yep. by the Houston Texans. I like what he said. He goes, he told us something on Wednesday when we were watching practice and doing everything. He goes, life in the NFL is fair. If you just keep working hard, you'll get rewarded. So, a great example of it. Newton over the top. 
Brandon Whitaker. And tackled down there by Trevathan. And Kubiak giving credit to Reeves and Shanahan, Seifert, and John Harbaugh. Said, I learned a great deal passing through Baltimore last year. It's not always so much about X's and O's, but the morale of the team. It was really a big learning experience for him watching the way John Harbaugh operated. Yeah, I think he was coached a little different, differently here in Denver than he did down in Houston. Connecting with the players a little more, that's always it. That's what this game is about. Can you connect to the players and get their best of their ability out of them? And, hey. Gary Kubiak winning the Super Bowl. Does it all. Even Evan Mathis, the left guard for the Broncos, is out there recording the moment with his camera trained on number 18. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense number 14 for a late hit. It's a 15-yard penalty, plus this situation requires a 10-second runoff. So please put one second on the game clock. One second. Mercifully, the they run it down to one second. The first to ever get to 200 wins. Some of the records. And now two-time Super Bowl champion. A final star turn it is for Peyton. And the Denver Broncos have taken Super Bowl 50. Tracy, down to you. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. And Peyton, this feeling right now, your second Super Bowl, but what a season it was for you to get this win today. What does that mean? Well, it's very special, Tracy. Um, this game was much like this season has been. It, uh, it really tested our toughness, our resilience, our unselfishness. And uh, so it's only fitting it kind of turned out that way. And great bunch of teammates, great bunch of guys I got to play with. And I just feel very, very grateful. You mentioned this season, but does this win make you think about all the seasons you've had and just all the successes and what a career it's been? Do you reflect on that right now at this moment? Sure, you certainly do. You know, on the bus rides, and of course you get asked a lot of questions and you reflect about on all the coaches and family members and friends uh, that have helped you get to a Super Bowl, get to this point. So uh, I'm very grateful. Um, I've taken the time to call those people, tell them how much I appreciate their support, and uh, obviously it's very special to cap it off with a Super Bowl championship. So, Peyton, is this your final game for your career? You know, I'll take some time to reflect. I got a couple of priorities first. I want to go kiss my wife and my kids. I want to go, you know, hug my family. I'm going to drink a lot of Budweiser tonight, Tracy. And I promise you that. And uh, so I'm going to take care of those things first. And. Uh, Definitely got to say a little prayer and thank the man upstairs for this great opportunity, and I'm just very grateful. Go do it. Enjoy it. Congratulations. Thank you, Tracy. No way Peyton was going to announce it right there. Not going to try to upstage the moment for the rest of his teammates, in particular that fantastic defense that had a brilliant performance tonight and all season long. Well, week 17 at halftime through now, he conducted himself perfectly and he played his role on this football team as well as you can do it as a quarterback. Well, the confetti was flying tonight for the Denver Broncos.
and a fairy tale ending for their quarterback. The Broncos take it 24 to 10. And coming up next, the Toyota Post Game Show. For Bill, Tracy, Evan, Mike Carey, Jay Feely, and all the crew, Lance Barrow, Mike Arnold, producing and directing this. Sean McManus, our executive producer, along with Daryl Bryant. Jim Nance saying so long from Levi's Stadium. You've been watching Super Bowl 50 on CBS. The trophy presentation's coming up shortly, and James Brown as well after this. Welcome to the Toyota Post Game Show. Let's go places. Well, the Denver Broncos have defeated the Carolina Panthers 24 to 10 to win Super Bowl 50. Up next here on CBS, a special live late show with Stephen Colbert. Stephen has Tina Fey, Will Ferrell, and more surprises coming your way on the late show with Stephen Colbert. And welcome back to our set here at the Levi Stadium. Everyone, I'm James Brown, along with my guys, of course, Tony, Coach, Bart, and Boomer. Look here, two years ago, Denver lost convincingly to Seattle. John Elway went out and built a championship defense, and boy, did it show out. You know what, guys? This one's for Pat Bowen. This one's for Peyton Manning. And this one is done by one Wade Phillips. What a performance by this defense back-to-back -back in the AFC Championship game and now in Super Bowl 50. I tell you what, J.J. Wattman won the MVP, but Von Miller introduced himself to the masses. What a performance he put on. I didn't think that a defense could win a championship almost by themselves, but man, I've been proved wrong. And there's no question the MVP of this game was Von Miller. Again, the last two weeks, two and a half sacks in each game, two cause fumbles tonight, a one-man wrecking ball, and again, he really won this game with that defense. Yeah, and hats off to DeMarcus Ferrell, his counterpart on the other side. He had himself a game, too, along with Malik Jackson and Derek Wolf. But I want to talk about Peyton Manning. I know he didn't play the best of a game, but that is something that we, we expected. He did have the one turnover, but my hat's off to him. The season that he's had up and down, and for him to, fight, to get that Super Bowl to ride off into the sunset, it was a great Sheriff's last dance. And everyone knew that it was going to be that defense and the supporting cast to get it done, and boy, did that defense do it. But Peyton Manning will ride off into the sunset. Up next, the Vince Lombardi Trophy presentation to the champion Broncos. Well, the celebration here is because the Broncos have knocked off the Carolina Panthers by the score of 24 to 10. They claim the Super Bowl 50 Lombardi Trophy. And a reminder, up next on CBS, a special live late show with Stephen Colbert. Stephen has Tina Fey, Will Ferrell, and more surprises as we welcome you back to the Toyota Post Game Show. Now up to Jim Nance. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the MVP of Super Bowl 32, Terrell Davis, and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. The MVP of Super Bowl 3, Joe Namath. of Super Bowl 10, Lynn Swan.
Thank you, Lynn Swan. Commissioner, it's time to present the Lombardi Trophy to the Boland family. Annabelle is here. And I think we're going to pass it on down over here to Joe Ellis. Joe, why don't you put your hands on the Lombardi Trophy as the CEO of this Broncos organization. Annabelle, I know you want to accept it with these words. Go ahead, Roger has passed this trophy over. Well, before we do, let me just thank all the Bronco fans and tonight, Peyton. Peyton, I don't know if this is your last rodeo, but it was one heck of a ride and we all thank you for the ride. So thank you. Annabelle, I know this is a special moment for you. And we're all thinking about Pat, a great man, a man who led this organization. And we're proud you could take this back to Denver for Pat Bowen and for your Denver Bronco fans, your Super Bowl champs. Congratulations. Annabelle, the mic is yours. If Pat was here today, he would say he is very proud of his team and the best fans in the NFL. <laughs> On behalf of the Bolin family, congratulations to the Denver Broncos. For the third time, Broncos country, you are Super Bowl champions. Big John, why don't you put your hands on that trophy? I know you've had it in your hands before, but this one, for constructing this team, what does this one mean to you? Well, and I, I'm going to say this, and he would not want me to say this, but this one's for Pat! Why don't you hand it off here? Number seven, to your great friend Gary Kubiak. How do you describe this moment and what this team and this defense did tonight? Oh, this team's been special all year long, Jim. And, you know, this football game was exactly the way we won all year long. You know, we just kept battling. We grinded. We called ourselves the grinders, and we grinded one more time to a championship. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. The first in the history of the game to win a Super Bowl as a head coach for the same team he played for. That's you. Congratulations. Thank you, Jeff. And the MVP of Super Bowl 50 is Vaughn Miller. Vaughn, this was a fascinating matchup with you and Cam, the first two draft picks back in 2011. And all night long, this Denver defense was on him, making life very difficult. How about this run by this Denver defense all season, in particular tonight against the highest scoring team in the league? I'm so proud of my guys. It's, it's been every last one of the guys in the locker room that has got me to this moment right here. Could have gave up on me, but he kept pushing, he kept being the type of guys that they aren't like him. I'm very, very appreciative of them. Happy for Clady, happy for Ryan, happy for the old line, I'm happy for Bronco Nation. We're going to celebrate this one all summer. Congratulations, Vaughn. What a couple of games you put together here in the last two weeks, too. Vaughn Miller, the MVP. And ladies and gentlemen, let's bring in number 18, Peyton Manning, and let him hold that trophy. Well, the word was last night when you spoke to the team, at the end it got difficult to get the words out. Can you share with us what you said? Well, it's certainly been an emotional week for everybody, Jim. And, and last night was a uh, special time. Just the players and the coaches were in there together. And we just kind of reflected on what all we've been through this season. And this has been a tough, resilient, unselfish bunch of guys. And, and that was evident tonight in this game. And I've just been honored and grateful to have been a part of it. So I was just thanking them for letting me be a part of the journey. You know, not everyone here inside the stadium 
heard what you said to Tracy Wolfson. So if you'd share it one more time, the commissioner made reference to perhaps this is your last rodeo. Is this it? Will you ever step foot on the field again tonight, or do you walk off with the fairy tale ending, holding this in your hands? Well, Jim, um, I got some good advice from uh, Tony Dungy, who's going into the Hall of Fame and my old coach, and he said, don't make an emotional decision. This has been a very emotional week, an emotional night, and I got a couple of priorities in order. I want to I want to go kiss my wife, kiss my kids. I want to go celebrate with my family and teammates. And I'm going to drink a lot of beer tonight, Jim. Budweiser, Von Miller's buying. And uh, those are my priorities at this point. I'll take some time to reflect on the other. But um, I'm going to say a prayer and a thank you to the man upstairs for this opportunity for sure as well. Well, listen, there's only one thing that can be sweeter to have in your hands than that trophy. And that's your two children right here who are reaching up and wanting to grab hold of it and share it with their daddy. Congratulations, Peyton. Jim, thank you very much. Go Broncos! And we're going to send it back to James Brown. Congratulations to the champions of the world, the Denver Broncos. JB? All right, Jim, a celebratory night indeed by and for the Broncos. And the Toyota Post Game Show will continue from here at Levi Stadium after this.